This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Charity auction coming your way. Hey, so let's talk a little bit about the promo. Uh, Bruce told a famous story on something to wrestle that he's watching the show on a monitor. And apparently a lot of the quote unquote boys were doing the same. And he somehow winds up watching the scene with Vince McMahon that starts Monday night raw with you. Can you sort of set the stage? So this promo open raw. Yeah. And you know what? Let's play it right now. Here we go. Here it is. Well, now here's the WWF and here's WCW. Well, there's Jeff Jarrett. And here we have the owner of the World Wrestling Federation and now the owner of WCW. That's right. I, Vince McMahon, I have purchased, I own my own competition. <laughs> And tonight, tonight I have the ability to address WWF fans as to what this means. I have the ability to address WCW stars as to what this means to them. And yes, I have the ability to address WCW fans as to what this actually means to them as well. Tonight, at the right time, there'll be a special simulcast. And let me just say that tonight, for sure, one man will make history. And that's me, Vince McMahon. Now, as far as the Jeff Jarrett's of the world are concerned, you know how Jeff spells his name? That's J-E-double-F. Well, you know what? Hmm. I would suspect that we'd spell it a different way after tonight. That would be capital G, double O, double N, double E. God. That's how Raw started. Top five most important Raws in the history of professional wrestling. Maybe one of the most important shows in the history of professional wrestling. And it starts with the Overlord, the most powerful man in wrestling, ribbing the way you spell your name and publicly firing you. Boy, you just got history coming and going, don't you? Conrad, I had a flashback. Put this, put this on and really think through this. 1986 was my first match. Yep. Or that, Kaufman, David Letterman show, Jackie Fargo, Jerry Lawler, all the folks coming through, my vision of the business, my thoughts on the business. And fast forward up, I forgot that open raw. I had in my mind, and, and I don't know if people know how you make this uh, chicken shit turn into chicken salad that you, you know, you have researchers and it's a whole team at that tree and the guys, yeah. but to, to really drill down into it. But when I knew we were doing this topic and this is where it comes to, but if you were to hear that back as a 37 year old in my, okay, we'll call it ego. It takes the ego to go around. This is I for a thought and maybe carried that with me. Vince is going to shoot an angle with me. Oh, okay. It's all about money. Think, think that I, when I heard that he went through all this, who did he pick out? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who did he pick when, when you really drill it down? He can't fire me because I'm not hired. Hey, I'm getting paid through November, October, November, December, whatever it is. But no, who's he got a working relationship that drew money? And when I left at 99 was the hottest heel on the card. That's arguable sake, but, but a, a red hot heel, he's a business guy who can he take from this roster that he knows will do the job in spite of any circumstances, whether good, bad, or indifferent. In my last night in 95, I did the job to Sean. I could have walked out beforehand, did the job to Sean and left China, did the job to China and left. Who's willing to do business. He picked me to fire me. We're doing an angle. Wow. 
I think from the outside, we all thought, oh, remember when he held up Vince? This is Vince's receipt. And your brain, as you said, ego comes into it, goes to, no, he knows I'll do business. You know, I'm going to bitch about my payoff, maybe. I'm not going to like my creative, maybe, but I'll do what he wants. You know, I'll put Sean over. You can cover me in flour. That's fine. But the public firing. So take me to that moment. Bruce says, y'all are watching together. Do you remember seeing it on the monitor? Was Bruce nearby? What's your reaction? I don't remember Bruce, but I'm not to say that, look, me and Bruce have always, and it goes with our, me and Tom, his brother, his brother hit it off from day one. And I can't tell you how many miles that I rode with Dr. Tom and Tom had been in the business. I don't know, five, seven years longer than me. And Tom was close enough to my age. He wasn't quote unquote, an old timer but it was very seasoned and Tom like he is today. He's part of the ad free family, but he's very giving of his knowledge and he had a way and maybe some stories we can't tell on, 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 on this podcast, but me and Tom had a unique, not a unique. Yeah, it was unique because Tom would cut through the BS. Hey Jeff, that, that sucked. Now, what about this way? So Tom critiqued my in-ring work. So I say all that me and Tom had a really tight relationship. He also knew that me and my dad didn't have such a great relationship. I also knew that him and Bruce weren't, oh, yeah, he's my brother, but guess what? (laughs) Our relationship, uh, you know, and and they're just two of, I don't know how many many Pritchard brothers are there, five, I think. Yeah, there's a bunch. Yeah, so, so, you know, our our family connection, we we ran up down the roads together. Tom is a heel, me is a baby face. Tom, I can remember coming through the dressing rooms a lot of nights going, damn, that was a hell of a match. And it was all off Tom's psychology. He knew what he was doing. So anyway, me and Tom had a good relationship. Fast forward to me and Bruce is doing the vignettes, working together. Bruce was a supporter of me working against Scott Hall. I knew that. I absolutely knew that Bruce really liked the Razor Double J storyline. So now we're, you know, I'm not going to get sidetracked, Conrad, and, and and do all that. But coming fast forward, here comes Bruce. Bruce, we had a relationship. I knew he wasn't a, he was pissed off that I walked out in Nashville that night, like really mad at me. And and also I knew coming back, he wasn't the greatest a fan of, of me coming back in the fold. But Russo was also writing, and I knew everybody had their own individual ups and downs. And, you know, at that time, you know, Russo and Farrar were, were lead writers. But anyway, get to Panama City. Again, unless you're in the industry, but the boys will be the boys will be the boys. And at the end of the day, we're all going to cross paths again. Bruce grew up in the wrestling business in Houston. I grew up in Tennessee. So, I, 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 and maybe wrongly, may, maybe this is completely inaccurate. Maybe Bruce really enjoyed it for the moment, but I didn't take it anything slight. I don't remember him standing next to me. But as I heard that promo just five minutes ago, it, it came back in my, my mind. I'm going, he started Raw with Jeff. He started Raw with Jeff. Where are we going with this? People came up and asked me this, namely Bob Ryder. Not just, not just started Raw, started the Raw. I mean, for years, fans had, I mean, and my gosh, look how much money the, the quote-unquote after mags made off of the fantasy booking of what if the undertaker, you know, wrestled the giant, what if, you know, the undertaker wrestled Goldberg Austin was the dream match of all match when they were red hot. So all of that, I mean, even going back to before Hogan came over, it was Hogan and flair who would win. They had done this for decades. And now this is the show where it's finally, Hey, we're announcing it can happen. I own them both. And instead of starting off with teasing, Boy, now we've got the dream matches coming. You know, everybody. Nope, I'm gonna fire that motherfucker. I mean, that's the way we read it, right? Like, see, and I can't, I can't put myself in your shoes. Yeah, in, in this time frame, because I was so ingrained to on the grind, Nitro, Raw, Thunder. You know, in in the TV moment, right in TV. You know, being a part of good creative, being a part of bad creative, all that to go with it. And he starts Raw with Jeff. Bruce says that. He didn't tell you what the creative was and you didn't know what the creative was. You watched on a monitor like everybody else. When you saw it, laughed, patted him on the back and walked away. That sound about right. And and I can tell you that, 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 you know, full transparency, and this is so liberating and er, 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 we text back and forth, but there's a little bit of cleansing in all this. And through the, the last three and a half, four years, I've had different moments of this. 
but I can assure you going on inside of Jeff's head was I'm going to give him the nervous kind of the, the golf clap pat. Hey, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> walking away like, okay, he started with raw. What does that really mean? Man, what are we doing next week? Where's raw at next week? Am I on raw next week? Am I on SmackDown? Wait, no, ah, that, Jeff, you're getting too far ahead. Wait. Okay. He wouldn't have put me. It's, it's the old game in your mind. He wouldn't have put me on TV unless there were plans. Well, maybe not. Well, I'm getting paid. I'm not going to give that up. And why would he pay me this money when he wouldn't pay me this two years ago? And guess what? I'm going back to my Memphis roots. When you have a roster of, you know, those days at WCW, a hundred guys or 80 guys or 60 guys, it's a big pile of mess. Regardless, nobody, I can remember Hall, Nash, uh, Hogan, Flair, Goldberg, whatever that, you know, Booker, just the whole big roster. I, I, and I do remember having this conversation with my dad, maybe not the week after, but the following couple of weeks, nobody means nothing, dad. If everybody goes over at once, it's complete dilution. It will not work. It just won't. The, how can you make anybody special if there's 30 new guys that show up? It just isn't going to work. So that night though, we're staying on the night. I can hang on, hang on time out. Did you say that because you had seen what happened with the UWF and the NWA before when Crockett it, bought out Watts? It's okay. Oh, UWF, I always refer to it as Watts territory. Yeah. Yes. But if you also remember when Geigel in K Kansas City went out of business, there's been an influx. It, it, it's just, you know, um, when we came in to Dallas from USWA and Michael Hayes and Kevin Von Eric, hey, we need your help. Well, all of a sudden, my dad was like, no, wait a minute. Eric Embry's there. We don't need to send everybody at once. And Cactus Jack and Gary Young and, you know, just, I guess, cumulative effect of looking at my entire rearview mirror, so to speak. People had tried it and it didn't work. It doesn't work. I yeah. mean, period. It just, it just doesn't, it, 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 it's the, it's hard enough to get one guy over. You can't get 30 over. Bingo. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you can notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a funded your loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.